What's up everyone? It's Anna, also known as that Star Wars girl, and I finally gave in. I decided I couldn't wait. I'm going to be doing a reaction and then going back and recapping what happens in this Avengers in-game trailer. Now, at first I was like, you know what? I'm not going to watch it. I'm not going to let anything spoil it for me. I'm just going to wait until the movie comes out and I'm going to go into it blind. That didn't last because I'm the most impatient person on the face of this damn planet. So, I need to watch this, so let's check it out. I've already kind of been spoiled about a little bit what's happened with Captain Marvel and people freaked out over, like, her makeup and, I guess, something with Thor's hammer. So I'm excited to see what's gonna happen. So, without further ado, let's watch this. And I apologize for the sound. My speakers have been acting a little bit weird. So if you hear a screeching noise, that's my speakers. <laughs> All right. Black and white. I've seen that image. That's what I talked about before. <sighs> I loved you. Ugh. I know I said no more surprises, but I was really hoping to pull off one last one. Ugh, the pills. Watching all of these in theaters. What we can do is our best. And sometimes the best that we can do. You guys all know how I feel about that. <gasps> the black and white, that just everything's just Oh, the fills. Yes, her hair's back! Rocket! Uh, I'm so down for Rocket to beat Thanos. And I know I made a mistake last time. I know I thought that was Captain Marvel, but it's Black Widow. I know, guys. I'm so excited. Oh, it looks so good! Oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah. I like this one. Uh, let's. Let, let's stop this. Uh, okay, well, um, aside from the ending, I know this is what I saw. This is the spoiler part that I guess I saw. I remember I saw this image because when people were posting the pictures of the trailer, like, you know, you tag the link and it shows kind of a little image. This was the image, so I was like, okay, you know, crash landing. I wonder what that could be. And... I saw pictures of people criticizing Captain Marvel's makeup, which, I mean, let's let's go and look. I talked about this on the live stream with Jessie. Uh, let, let's just look at her face. Okay, I guess it's back this way. And yeah, I know people said, oh, push the space bar, but uh, my computer setup is a little bit weird, so I just have my mouse. So I, I apologize, I'm not pressing the uh, space bar. The space bar. So this is a kind of, uh, okay, there we go. I guess that's a decent picture. Okay, so I guess she has different makeup than what she did in the movie. I just want to let you all know, every single one of those actors has makeup on them. It doesn't, it, just because it looks natural doesn't mean that she has more makeup than Thor does. Well, I mean, he probably is not wearing eyeshadow like she is. He's probably got something else going on, but he 100% has makeup on him. And it's all about the color and the value. So she's wearing a darker lipstick than let's say Black Widow. Black Widow is probably wearing a natural tone because hers has more of a saturation. It's a darker value. It's going to show up more, but I guarantee you she has just the exact same amount of makeup on as uh, Scarlett Johansson has. But I think the thing about this is the way that her makeup is done here. Yes, she has a smoky eye. Yes, this is a different 
probably makeup artist than the person that worked on Captain Marvel because this is the Avengers now. I think this has to do with making her look older. Her hair was at her shoulders. In Captain Marvel, it was curled, which, yes, I don't know where she got the time to go curl her hair, but she did, apparently. I honestly think she looks better right here because it actually makes her look like she has a facial expression and it's a battle of wills right here it this does not bother me like i thought it was going to be but honestly i think this has to do as a choice with showing maybe a little bit more emotion because i think the people that did the makeup now are like oh you know maybe she wasn't getting like she hadn't had a blank look look at the way they did her smoky eye that's very expressive it draws you to her eyes it makes her look interesting and it makes her look a little bit older because she's supposed to be gone for the past what 25 years she left in the 90s she's back now it's you know 2019 uh I think this helps. I think now, I mean, she said that she was 28 when she was filming Captain Marvel. Now this does. This looks like a woman that's, you know, in her late 20s, early 30s. I think this is appropriate. I don't have a problem with the makeup. That being said, I know I am a woman and I do like makeup. But I, I honestly think this compliments her really well. I don't know why people were saying stuff about her lipstick. I, I think she looks very nice right there. She looks lovely. I don't know what the big deal is. Like I said, I think that the eyeshadow helps her. If anything, this is helpful. The way her hair is done right now, I think that's, you know, it's done, it's straightened, and they did it with a bit of a wave to it, so that way it adds dimension and adds texture, because I know just from my mother having blonde hair and my sister having blonde hair, when you have blonde hair, it's not as voluptuous, it's not volume, so... I understand that sometimes when people have blonde hair, it's a little bit more fine, so you have to kind of do extra to make it look like it has volume, and the way her hair looks right here, it looks like it's very thin, so I think they did a good job. I don't see anything wrong with the way she looks. I think she looks better right here than in any other image that I've seen of her, any other video I've seen of her. This looks like somebody that's here to take care of business. This looks a lot better than what I saw, and I think it also has to do with the directing, it has to do with the editing, it has to do with the makeup artist, so I don't have a problem with it, but let's move on from Captain Marvel, since this was just at the end, and, you know, all of them are meeting her. Okay, like, look at that, look at the smirk! This is a lot more expressive, this is, I feel like, kind of what they should have been going for in the Captain Marvel movie, and I don't have a problem with it in this trailer. So, let's go. Okay, there we go, Rocket. I've been saying, if anyone can get that gauntlet away from Thanos, it's gotta be Rocket. He's gonna be the one that comes up with a plan. He's like, yo, I'm getting that gauntlet, and he'll get it. I know he will. So, I have complete faith in Rocket. I've been saying, you know, Team Rocket. I love, I said this when it was playing, I love that her hair is back to red. I don't know why they had her be blonde. I did not like it. It, or even her action figures, it just looked like it was a yellower shade than her skin and it just I just I don't think it was flattering I like Black Widow's you know red hair I think it suits her I loved it and a lot of people didn't like it in Iron Man 2 but I, that one scene where she's just fighting with a badass and her hair's a little bit longer and it's curled and it's more of a darker burgundy than it's you know kind of been the vibrant red I actually preferred that the best I think that was very flattering for Scarlett Johansson but I'm glad it's back and I'm glad that they're showing that you know I guess that's her natural color since it shows a little bit grown out but I'm, I'm back on board I like it I like it all right so ugh, this I like how they're consistent with the trailers I like that in the first like little teaser it showed and it showed the people that have gone and how it's got you know this black and white with a little bit of red I like that a lot I think that's a very good style choice even here Asgard is gone we got the little flags here that are red uh, it's really great call outs Ugh, the fills the fills the fills and I I've said this before, I don't know how many times I'm going to have to repeat myself. I have met Jeremy Renner in person, that is why I do not like him. He and I had... I've, I've told the story a million times, but uh, I don't like this guy. I don't really feel like I need to repeat this story. He's not a nice person. Uh, but And that's the thing. You, would, you wouldn't know that by the way he acts, because then, you know... When he was in Avengers, he's actually a pretty nice dude, but uh, in real life he's not, which is very unfortunate. Ah, uh, God. All right. So all, all, like just these little callbacks. Oh my God. Like I remember watching Captain America. I remember watching Iron Man for the first time. I was in, I was in 
the Regal Theater in Turlock, California, and I remember because that's the theater I always went to as a kid, and I remember when it was built, and there's little stars on the ceiling that have purple lights on them, and I remember going, and I remember seeing Iron Man, and I remember exactly what theater I was in. I was in the one on the left in the very first theater, and that's where I watched Iron Man back in uh, a long time ago. But, I mean, just this little part. I... Uh, I did not see Captain uh, America in that theater. I think I saw that in Brendan, which is in Modesto. And I remember this exact moment because I know what it's like to, I mean, obviously I'm not a guy. I know it's a very different uh, situation for a man to go through this that he did as compared to a woman because, I mean, women typically are. I'm just saying from the people that I've experienced in my life, I meet a lot more girls that are, you know, shorter than girls that are taller. So I know what it's like to be very short and, you know, not, my, my head never fits in those things. So when I saw this, I'm like, oh my God, dude, like I couldn't even imagine this guy struggle. Like all he wants to do is go and fight and defend his country and his friends are going. And that's when you bring back in like Winter Soldier and just his relationship with Bucky and how you watch, you watch as Steve Desperately, he's doing anything he can to go and fight in a war. And poss he he's willing to give his life, and they won't let him. So he is forced to go and, you know, go through a science experiment and change his entire body and change everything about him just so he can go fight and protect the people that he loved. Like, I remember watching that and just being like, like, once he goes through his transformation and he's running and him learning his powers, like, it was such a great moment because that, like, Iron Man, yeah, we get to see Tony Stark, but we always knew Tony Stark was smart. We know he's a genius. When he builds the Iron Man suit and he does it so that way he can survive and get out of that situation, it's not something that would be, you know, completely out of his abilities, but I think that it had more to do with, you know, this is a critical life uh, decision, I'm gonna have to do this or else I'm gonna die here, kind of thing, but it really reminded me of when I was a kid and I watched Spider-Man, you know, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, and when Peter Parker is learning his powers in that moment when, you know, they zoom in on the fingers and you see the little, like, the little hooks and he climbs the wall, like, I love that, I love that in superhero movies when they just, when they get, like, superhero powers that they did not have, that they were not born with, it's not like Superman, but even though when, like, Superman's fighting his powers and, you know, he's learning how to fly and all that kind of stuff. But just this, like, I remember him running and he's like, finally, finally, his body matches the person he is inside. And it's it's just amazing that, and I, I talked a lot about uh, Iron Man's evolution and Thor's revol uh, <laughs> revolution, Thor's evolution and how they were both spoiled rotten brats and then they became men. Steve was already a man. He was already a very noble person, and he, it's one of those unfortunate things where, you know, even though he doesn't technically have a disability, in a way, his body wasn't, you know, doing it for him. It was hindering him in what he wanted to do. They wouldn't let him go and fight in a war. They wouldn't let him go and defend his country. He could have argued that he could go into the medical field and be a doctor and kind of do the thing where they did Hacksaw Ridge, but even then I think that guy, that, that actor is a little bit taller. But so, just to see the trials that he is willing to go through for the people that he cares about, and you continue to see that in Captain America's, you know, in his character, and you get to see the evolution, and yes, even though he's still a good person, he never, you know, falters to being a bad person per se, but he's willing to say, you know what, I wanted to fight for this country, and when they say, hey, you have to sign the accords, and he's like, no, I won't. I'm going to stay true to who I am, and who I am is telling me that this is wrong, and I'm going to defend my friend. I don't care what he's accused of. He is my friend, and I'm going to defend him because I believe he's a good person, and you know, if I were to turn him in, if I were to sign this, it would be wrong. So I'm going to stick with what is right. So just to see that, wow. How could you not stand behind Captain America? And I, I just remember this, and I, like, I'm, it makes me want to cry because I remember, like, getting emotional when I saw this and just seeing all the different places that Captain America went to. And 
It's like, there's some people that are physically able and they won't even do that. But this guy is willing to go completely change his everything about him and knowing the risks, knowing that he can die. And he doesn't care because it means more to him to protect others than it does to protect himself. And that is a superhero. And that's why I love Captain America. And yeah, I am 100% on Cap's side and not Iron Man's side in Civil War. I love Tony Stark. I love Iron Man. But Cap is the person I would stand behind. Off on that tangent. <laughs> oh my god. I, this is, I love the MCU. I love everything that it's done. Like, <sighs> just, and I am an artist and composition is everything. Just, just look at that composition. Look at all of that emotion just in this. And I mean, it's almost like a heart and it, you know, there's peace breaking away and, you know, Iron Man is in the light, Pepper is in the darkness, like, you, can, you can't see her face, you can only see her silhouette, you can see the light on her, but it's, you know, almost symbolic of the fact that Tony is not going to be Tony, he's completely embracing the fact that he's Iron Man and he's going to die as Iron Man, and because of that, Pepper is, you know, going, even though we don't, it hasn't been revealed if she disappeared with the snap, but, you know, he has to give her up and that's why her face is in darkness. And that, that's, again, it's one of the beautiful things about the MCU and just about movies in general is there is actually so much that goes into all of this and every shot is handpicked. There is a reason that this image made it into the trailer and not another because this is powerful. This conveys emotion and this makes you care. Tony Stark is not in this. His mask is in it, and just with his mask being in there, with the Iron Man mask, you are getting conveyed this emotion that Tony is losing Pepper, that she is losing him, that they are not going to be together, that this has, what Thanos did with the snap, not only did he, you know, get rid of half the population, but he's destroying what is left, and that's powerful. This is art, and I hate that it's going to end. I hate it. I uh, just, like, I remember this. I remember the first Iron Man suit. Oh, gosh, that, I can't believe it was that long ago because I remember it like yesterday. Even Odin, I love Anthony Hopkins. Uh, Silence of the Lambs is one of my favorite movies. And, uh, I mean, Thor was such a douche in the first movie. And I love how much he's grown. I love it. And I actually prefer Thor in the Avengers movies than in his own movies. But, I mean... And I'm one of those people, I really like movies about friendship. I love it. And the dynamic between them. And as, even the dynamic between him and Loki, you know, they're brothers. I know what, I have a brother. I have sisters. I know what that's like. So, and everyone that has a sibling knows what it's like to argue with your siblings. So, in the first Thor movie, I watched this video about how it's the most powerful out of all of the Marvel movies because of the dynamic between... Thor and Loki, and, you know, Thor isn't, you know, they aren't my favorite movies out of the MCU, but just like that, uh, when he described, or when the person, the narrator of the video that it was a man, he was describing, you know, just the dynamic between him and Loki and why Loki's motivation made him the best villain based on this movie, I was like, you know what, that was something that I hadn't really thought about, I love Tom Hiddleston as an actor, I love the character of Loki, not just for the Tom Hiddleston version, but because of the character in general. I really like that in, uh, you know, Norse mythology. And outside of Marvel, like, just in Norse mythology, I think he's cool, but then Marvel enhances that character, enhances all of them. So, when, and I, I know what it's like to be the, you know, disappointing child, the, the outcast child, because, I mean, this reminds me a lot of that. So when that person was doing, you know, the breakdown of the Thor movies and I was like wow you know I never thought about that before but j the dynamic between Thor and Loki and how Loki just wants to prove himself to his father I was like okay this gets me in the feels gets me really in the feels and Odin's gone Loki's gone which I'm like ah when Thanos did that Thanos is just killing all the characters I like I'm just I would have, I lost it in the theater, like, I did cry, I am one of those people, I did shed some tears, it got me, and like, oh, like, when Vision died, and I just would, when he did that, and oh, Scarlet, and it's just so close, so close, and there was, 
so many things that I'm just like in Infinity War. I'm like, why didn't you cut off his hand? Uh, okay, you have the time stone. Why didn't you go back to before Thanos got this crazy idea in his head and stop it from happening? Why? I don't know. I don't know why you just didn't do that. Uh, yeah, it, it might have erased, you know, the relationship, like, with uh, Thanos and Gamora. But, I mean, you would have saved a lot of freaking people's lives. You would have saved Gamora a lot of hurt in her life. You would have saved Nebula a lot of hurt in her life. But, plot, so, I understand. But, I mean, we can go and talk about Infinity War plot holes all day. But I want to focus on this trailer. And I know this video is getting a little bit long. And some people don't like that. I know other people do. But I'm going to uh, try to get through this. Uh, uh. Oh, well, I guess it's done because I clicked out of it. Sorry about that. I, As computer savvy as I am, I accidents happen, so I apologize. But, uh, yeah, that trailer uh, got me thinking about all the fills. And I think it's because it's been leading up to this. It's been ten years in the making. We started off with Iron Man. We have followed every superhero on their journey. And, I mean, even superheroes that haven't had movies. Technically, The Incredible Hulk, I guess, is still part of the Marvel, but it, it wasn't with Mark Ruffalo. It was with uh, Edward Norton. I like Edward Norton. I know that there was problems in the filming and with him being a difficult actor to work with. I get it. But there's just been so much buildup, even not including that and just seeing the way Hulk has been in the Avenger movies and in other superhero movies, it gets you. And, like, with Black Widow, she hasn't gotten a movie yet, and you feel for her. You feel for Scarlet Witch when she watches Vision die, then her herself dies. And, I mean, the big bomb, I remember, you know, Black Panther had just come out, and then they killed T'Challa right there. Like, that was... Whoa, when when he starts to disappear and like it does you just hear him say like, you know, let me help you kind of thing and then he just starts disappearing and the expression on her face, it's exactly what everyone in the audience felt because they were like, "Wow, I can't believe you killed off Black Panther just like that. You just introduced me. You just had this big movie and eh, it gets you. They 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 hook you and then they get you and it ah uh, that's when you know you're being successful because people care about these characters. And I'm I'm not excited to see it and I'm not excited to see what the way that they've been playing it off is that Iron Man's going to be gone, Cap's going to be gone, Thor's going to be gone. They're making the way for the new heroes. That's their whole thing with Captain Marvel. And it's to make the way for these so it's going to be like Captain Marvel and Spider-Man. Those are going to be the next ones for Phase 4. But I don't want to lose Iron Man. I don't want to lose Captain America. I don't want to lose Thor. I don't want to lose these characters that I've spent 10 years caring about. I mean, I was 10 years younger when these came out. It's been something that's been a part of me for a decade. And I'm not that old. I'm in my 20s. So for that to be based... Almost half my life, I've known them. I've seen Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. It it breaks my heart to see them go, and I don't want that to happen. This movie's going to be epic. It's going to be freaking awesome. I'm just not ready to let go. I'm not. I'm, I'm one of those. I'm not good with that kind of stuff. I'm not good with goodbyes. So I already know this is going to be so, so painful to watch. It's going to be epic, but if they die, it's going to be complete waterworks. And I know that there's already supposed to be character deaths. And I'm glad that it hasn't happened yet to the extent, like, aside from the Thanos snap. But I hope it has a happy ending and nobody dies. Like, I love Game of Thrones, but everyone freaking dies and it gets you. And then it makes you more attached to these other characters. This isn't Game of Thrones. So, oh, uh, I just... I'm not, I know it's coming, I'm just, I'm not prepared for it. I know I've had 10 years to prepare myself for this, but I'm not prepared. <laughs> I'm not at all, and as excited as I am, I'm scared. I'm scared to say goodbye, and I'm scared to let go of these characters, because they're a part of me, they're a part of who I am. Not just with the movies, but with the comics as well, and just with everything that surrounded them, I'm not ready. 
gonna be awesome, but it's gonna suck. Alright guys, I know this video gets is a little bit longer, so I guess I will say goodbye now. Let me know what you think in the comments, what if I missed anything in this trailer, because there was a lot. I only picked on a couple things, and I know I went off on tangent, so if you think I missed something that you th want me to talk about, let me know in the comment section. I do read every single one of my comments, so let me know. And if you haven't, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, if you didn't, that's okay too, you don't have to. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Make sure you click that little bell. That way you get notifications when I put out other videos and when I do live streams because people tend to like those. My puppy tulip is usually in them with me. And everyone, we're in for it. It's going to be a bumpy ride. So uh, get tissues, prepare for the waterworks at, at the theater when Endgame comes out because I will be there and I am excited. But until then, everyone, have a great rest of your day. And may the force be with you because we are really, really, really going to need it. Bye. Hey everyone, after being asked for months now, I finally got a P.O. box, so if you want to send me some mail, go ahead and send it to Anna, that Star Wars girl, or TSWG for short, at P.O. Box number 28171, Santa Ana, California, 92799-8171. Thank you, have a great day guys!